Alleluia, Alleluia. The Catholic Community of Sacred Heart welcomes you to this celebration of the Eucharist on the second Sunday of Easter. We're so pleased you're here with us to celebrate the risen Lord. In our gospel today, we're going to hear about Thomas and his words to our Lord, which were, my Lord and my God. I'd like to encourage you to get yourself settled into a place that is most comfortable, and then in the silence of your own heart, to repeat those words several times, slowly and quietly, my Lord and my God. And now we join together in the celebration of the Eucharist of our Lord. Come and see, come and see, he is alive. A grave that is empty, a promise fulfilled. God who was with us is here with us still. He is here, he is here, he is alive. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Well, on behalf of the 12 apostles of Punta Gorda, we hope you have enjoyed a beautiful, beautiful Easter. And here we are at the second Sunday of Easter, also known throughout the world as Divine Mercy Sunday. And let's prepare ourselves to enter the divinity, the beauty of this liturgy by calling to mind our own humanity, our weaknesses and our sins, and asking for God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great in number, men and women, were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and on mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those who were disturbed by unclean spirits. And they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, Mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for He. and was falling but the Lord helped me my strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my Savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress the kingdom and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll, what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, 
stood one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and he said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. To God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have seen, who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, my dear friends, how I love this first post-resurrection appearance of Jesus. First of all, the glorified body is obviously something wonderful because he can pass through locked doors. He can just appear out of nowhere. And uh, obviously, 
He could have said so much, having just been crucified and really pretty much abandoned by all of his closest disciples. Instead, notice what he says. Peace be with you. Also notice what he doesn't say. He doesn't say, by the way, gang, the nails really hurt and the final insult of the gash in the side. Where were you? He doesn't even mention it. He just brings peace. Peace be with you. And then there's this uh, arresting moment. This is very important because it's now the first act he's going to do after he has been crucified, after he has died, and now he's risen from the dead, notice that he breathes on them. Once again, the power of the breath. Remembering that the word in Hebrew, also translated in Greek, breath means the same as wind, means the same as spirit. So in the act of breathing, he sends the Holy Spirit upon them, gives them the spirit, and along with that immediately, these haunting words, whose sins you shall forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you shall retain are retained. Now, I don't know about you, but for years I struggled with the retain part. I always understood the beauty of his uh, primary teaching on love and forgiveness. And as an attitude of life as a Christian, we simply forgive, period. That's a non-negotiable aspect of being a disciple of Christ. So what is this retain stuff? When would someone ever retain sin? What does that mean? And you know, over the ages, I've come to really loved that teaching. And let me explain by a personal story about myself that illustrates this, I think, very well. Once when I was 23 years old and just out of the monastery and just out of my first year of theology, I was teaching school in Boston and went to confession one day. And uh, in the confessional, I happened to run across a priest who totally rubbed me the wrong way. And I began to argue with this priest and he with me, and it got to be a terrible experience. It was so hard on me that I didn't go to confession for a year. And uh, then I made a pilgrimage to Lourdes, France. And I don't know how many of you have been there, but it's exceedingly beautiful, exceedingly peaceful and graceful. And uh, I thought, well, before I go take that bath in the cleansing waters of Lourdes, I should go to confession. So I walked into the Reconciliation Chapel, and I'm sitting there and see the light on for English speaking. And uh, there's a window where you can see the priest, his face, and then, uh, of course, two uh, positions at either side for the penitents to go. And lo and behold, some lady is in there arguing with the priest. They're arguing so loud, I could hear everything. It was a shouting match. They were back and forth at each other for a long time. And uh, now my heart is beating, my heart is racing. I'm thinking, oh no, don't tell me I'm gonna have a repeat of the unfortunate experience I had before. And I'm growing in anxiety when I see this other priest come and go into the next confessional, turn on the light, and it says English. And I was next in line. So I went in, began my confession, and this priest was exceedingly kind. I began to recount 
my last unfortunate experience of confession and my apprehensions about returning to the sacrament. And uh, he encouraged me firmly but gently, saying, I see your intention is good, my son. Continue. And as I continued with my confession, he said, let me go back to your unfortunate experience. He said, you know, the Lord did teach us in the Gospel of John, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. The second is that the church has kept the sacrament of reconciliation all this time so that you could be absolutely certain of God's forgiveness, even if you feel stone cold. And this can come in very, very handy, especially if you have committed a very grave sin. And the third point I'd like to offer for your counsel is this. When you are sick and need a doctor, you find a doctor that you like and that you relate well with for your continual care, your general practitioner who will take care of you and you always stay with one that you resonate with, that you can work with. But in the case of an emergency, you would take whatever doctor was on call in the ER, even if he was horrible and mean to you, you would still let him set your arm if it was broken. So keep that in mind. And then he gave me my penance. I said my act of contrition, and I felt like a new person. I tell you this story because there's a beautiful uh, real-life story here that may be similar to your development and understanding these mysteries of faith. Might I suggest that when we look at our sins, that we simply take responsibility for them. Hmm. I take responsibility for this sin which has hurt other people and has hurt myself. And uh, I confess the sin and ask for for forgiveness, of course. But notice the responsibility aspect. I take responsibility for this sin, hopefully leading to contrition, hopefully leading to amendment of life. Finally, about forgiveness. If we don't forgive, we essentially cut off the flow of divine life. We just wall ourselves off to it. No wonder the Father can't extend his life-saving forgiveness to one who has sealed himself off from it. So, beautifully are we given this gift. In our freedom, we can choose to love. We can choose to forgive. And God respects his humankind so much that our freedom is always there and always retained. But let us use that freedom wisely for the sake of love, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which comes to us through the gift of the Father and Christ Jesus, his Son, our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
Unlike Thomas, we are those who have not seen, and yet we believe. Because we believe in Jesus, who rose in our flesh to glory, we pray for others with trust in the God who listens. That the church may be renewed in the joy of the Lord's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the divine mercy may change the hearts and minds of people filled with hatred and conflict, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who doubt may find faith in the one who was dead and now lives forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God's gift of forgiveness has been poured out on the community that is called the church. May each of us be filled with the Holy Spirit, forgiving one another as God has forgiven us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus' gift of peace filled the disciples and gave them new strength for their mission. May we be filled with the peace that is given to those who confess Jesus as my Lord and my God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they rest in the peace of Christ. For our loved ones, for the sick, the homebound, the military, law enforcement personnel, and all first responders. And we remember most especially those for whom we have promised to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father all merciful, in his own body your son rose to new life. Accept the prayers we make in his name, for he is the first and the last who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. 
For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as without end they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now, now forever. and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. We offer to each other now a sign of our love and peace. And if you are with us praying in solitude, join me for a moment of silence, won't you please? And let's extend our peace to the places in the world that need our prayers the most. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. If I had seen the sunset On the day that Jesus died And felt the glow of the sunrise When the tomb was open wide known you could I have seen that you were more than just a man you were Lord and King but now I know you can see that you are Lord of all, and you are Lord. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Before our final blessing, a big thank you to all of us that sent Easter greetings our way. Big thank you to everybody that continues to support this ministry that we do at Sacred Heart by your hitting that like button and the bell button and that subscribe button. And also feel free always to share, hit the share button and send this message to whoever you think might benefit from it. And uh, all of you that donate to us, you keep us going and we thank you so much for your support. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration of the Eucharist is now finished. We go forth in peace and in joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful rest of the week, everyone. By God's grace, we'll see you next Sunday. Oh,